Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome back to Planet Earth. Today we're going to be talking about the most likely origin of water on our planet and we're going to discover what exactly brought this beautiful blue element to our planet. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So by now you probably have heard of at least one or maybe even a couple of theories on what actually brought water, the blue stuff on the surface, to our planet. We obviously take it for granted, but it's actually surprisingly rare to find a planet that has so much on the surface, especially in liquid form. Uh, now, what is interesting is that for the longest time we actually thought it was either asteroids or comets or even just some large collisions uh, bringing the elements uh, through essentially just, you know, delivery by colliding straight on with our planet. Uh, and uh, it does make sense, right? But the thing is, we've studied meteorites and we've even studied comets and discovered that the water composition of that particular water is actually different from the water we have on Earth. Specifically, the elements that uh, you would normally find uh, in between the molecules were just not the same. And then we actually looked at another object, specifically the moon, and discovered that the water on the moon, yes, there is water on the moon, the water on the moon was actually almost identical to the water on Earth, which implied one thing. They came from the same object. They basically start as the same ob object and separated into two parts. All right, so, so far so good. So we know that water may have already been on both of these objects and or something brought water to moon and earth from space. Well, assuming that uh, this water is actually from the same source, here is what we think today might be the most likely origin for water on both earth and the moon. In a nutshell, it's actually or was present uh, on Earth and the Moon from the beginning. In other words, it's coming from the inside. So let's uh, maybe go back a little bit and recreate. The early solar system collision between Earth and Theia, which most likely created our Moon. This collision, as you can see right now, um, basically ended up in the creation of Earth and the Moon, and their composition for this reason is actually pretty much the same. Inside of Earth, at this point, we started getting these layers of various deposits. On top, we had something called olivine, which is actually a very, very common mineral that can be found pretty much anywhere in the solar system. It's a very interesting rock that kind of looks like this. Basically, a slightly greenish rock that um, contains uh, silicate oxides, uh, some magnesium and some iron. But if you actually uh, look at this rock and if you start basically applying more pressure to it and also more temperature, it will start transforming into other stuff. And this is where things get really interesting. Uh, first of all, um, we actually discovered a very interesting uh, meteorite known as the Tenham meteorite back in the uh, 19th century. And this particular meteorite that you can see right here uh, allowed us to study the minerals that are present in very highly pressurized conditions uh, inside planets. Now, we don't really know exactly where this meteorite came from, but it, it has several really interesting minerals, except for olivine, that we were able to identify, and um, basically we think that they also exist in our planet Earth. And one of such minerals is called ringwoodite. Now, there's a whole entry about it in uh, on Wikipedia, but this is what ringwoodite looks like. It is blue, and it's blue for a reason. Now, its composition is not, not very much different from olivine. It's basically a silicate oxide with, um, I believe, a little bit of magnesium in it. It's, as a matter of fact, magnesium silicate uh, oxide or magnesium silicate in, that, in this case. But the blue stuff is actually a, a type of a hydroxyl molecule. It's basically a type of a molecule that then turns into water. It's OH with a negative charge. Uh, give it another hydrogen and it turns into H2O. It becomes water. Okay, well, so this stuff is apparently present inside our planet. And specifically, it's actually located right here at the cross section between 410 and 660 kilometers deep inside the ground. So obviously this is the surface, the ocean is here, The uh, this is where you walk. And then as you kind of keep going down lower and lower into Earth, um, you will first find a lot of olivine, this is olivine. 
And then you discover this so-called hydrated layer that um, is half ringwoodite and half this other uh, mineral called um, wadslayite. And this is essentially where you will also discover a tremendous amount of uh, water, or specifically hydroxyl molecule. And even though it may seem unlikely, we've actually even discovered diamonds that came from this particular region that were basically rich in water. And this is very unusual because we never thought that there would be so much water present here. How much water? Well, uh, current estimates put it at two to maybe even four times more than the surface of our planet. In other words, if all of this water came out and covered the, the surface of our planet completely, we would end up with something that looks like this. Basically, uh, very, very, very blue, completely covered by water, um, Earth. Now, this in itself is already pretty unusual. And what makes it even more unusual is that we think that this is probably present on other planets as well, including planets like Mars, planets like Venus, and also, um, obviously, our own moon. So our own moon may actually have a tremendous amount of water inside. So much water that uh, we could totally use this water to essentially uh, have a stable colony that just extracts water from inside the moon's crust. Or specifically here, it would be upper mantle. Alright, so how do we actually answer the question of where exactly did water come from and what exactly happened here? So, long time ago, basically billions of years ago, Earth basically was more or less dry and was still cooling down. It was pretty hot on the surface here, lots of volcanoes, lots of lava. But as it started cooling down, the convection on the inside started to um, create things like plate tectonics, basically where the continents started moving. And the volcanoes that were formed by interaction of plate tectonics started to essentially bring out the water from deep within the mantle. And just like that, piece by piece, droplet by droplet, all of this water uh, got extracted from within and ended up on the surface of our planet making it okay not like this a little bit more slowly let's do it slowly making it more and more hydrated with every eruption and eventually all of this resulted in what we know as earth today maybe a little bit more no a little bit more here we go so um all in all this is actually a completely different picture from what we had in mind before definitely not something that came th from comets or from asteroids it's most likely that the water actually came from within our planet. And this changes the picture entirely because it also changes the way we think about planets and what constitutes a habitable planet. It's basically... Okay, it's, it means that any planet can be habitable. We just have to find a way to extract the water from within or find planets that found a way to extract their own water from the inside. So it seems that the water is basically present everywhere already. But sometimes it's trapped inside, and sometimes it gets stuck there without any means of being released. Our planet found a way to release the water on the surface, and thus we ended up with this beautiful ocean that you see right here. And obviously this led to the creation of life, because all life started inside of this beautiful liquid ocean. And so for us to basically find other exoplanets that may have this, uh, that led to the ocean on the surface, we need to start understanding the internal structure of our planet Earth a little bit better, and find a way to basically study these minerals that we have on the inside, and also discover a way that they convert from one to another, and uh, how this layer here would then basically find a way to release the water onto the surface. So there's still no actual good explanation for any of this. It's just a theory that uh, seems to indicate that maybe just maybe this is where water really came from. But hopefully in the next few years we'll be able to actually determine with absolute certainty where and how liquid water was actually formed on the planet. For now, that's the best theory we have. And it's the one that I honestly think will probably change our understanding of the universe and also help us find other exoplanets that are habitable. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.